talkie, talkie, talkie. No more talkie. It can be a problem for all of us, for talk show hosts that have ADD and a two hour show by themselves with their producer, Sean Mapes. It can happen to you in real life at the big board meeting on a date in the midst of a serious conversation with your significant other. Sometimes we just grab that foot and we shove it very deep into our mouths. Kind of gross. Never fun afterwards as you're trying to gag it up. And I got to say, I can't remember someone in recent Houston sports memory that has put as much feet in his mouth as Dana Brown has since the Astros hired him this January. They got to send somebody to Dana Brown and either he's got to have one of those media relations people by his side at all times or a press secretary, or they have to tell him what Billy Madison told Veronica Vaughn while he was absolutely hammered and hallucinating penguins in the Adam Sandler movie, Billy Madison. What's the latest thing that he did? I'm not talking about saying we're going to get contracts done for Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman. They're going to retire here. I'm not talking about saying Kyle Tuck here will be here for life. Not talking about that either. I am talking about his own take on a managerial search that he is supposedly in charge of. He spoke for 30 minutes yesterday at baseball's winter meetings and had this to say about the one in-house candidate, Joe Espada. Written by Chandler Rome. Espada has interviewed for the Astros opening, general manager Dana Brown said, but will not be permitted to speak with the Brewers or any other interested team until Houston makes its final choice. Said Brown, quote, we hold the keys to permission. We have to go through this process before we can allow Joe to go interview. Because what if he goes there and gets the job? That's pulling from our guys. If we don't hire him and they're still looking for a manager and they request permission, he would definitely be a guy we would say, hey, yeah, you can talk to him. And here's the thing. Here's why it looks bad. The spot is not under contract. They don't have the ability to stop him from doing an interview. This past season was the final year of his contract. Said contract expired October 31st. Unless there's some clause in there that says he can't speak with other teams for one month, two months, three months, some sort of non-compete, which I don't believe would exist in baseball given how powerful the Players Association is and just given the existence of free agency for players I would imagine it's the same for managers and coaches you can't say that Dana and it's funny because it seems like Dana Brown does want to hire Joe Espada Espada deserves it he's been doing a heck of a job as a bench coach he's run our spring training and done a lot of good things here. He's got a good relationship with the players. He's been, of course, a candidate outside of our organization. But he's also saying, I'm not going to let him interview with other teams, even though I don't have the power to do that. If you're Joe Spot and you hear that, that's annoying. Does that mean that you don't want to be the manager of the Houston Astros? Probably not. But if Dana Brown is supposedly the one pushing to hire Joe Espada. When you're speaking publicly, at least, because everyone misspeaks, maybe have the facts about this candidate's status on your mind. Maybe be aware of them. 
And it's weird, too, because as this press conference continued, it does make me wonder just how much insight any baseball reporter has into what the Astros are planning to do to hire the next manager after Dusty Baker. Because he praised Espada a lot in this little press conference he had, but he wouldn't go so far as to say he's the leading candidate. No, it wouldn't be fair to call him that. I don't want to put that on Joe, said Dana Brown. I really like Joe, but I don't think we're going to grade him on a curve just because we know him. I think that he's a legit candidate. I just can't say that he's the leading candidate. But he's a legit candidate. I think he deserves to be talked to. I think he's good. He even brought up Espada unprompted when just asked about this process, saying, quote, we're making progress and we feel like we're getting closer. We're not going to rush because we want to do a thorough process, but we're making progress. The only candidate we have within the organization is Joe Espada. Joe deserves it. He's worked his tail off. He's been in the organization for six years. He's got a really good background. He's run spring training. He's a really good candidate, and so he's the only guy we've interviewed in-house. He brought the, him up unprompted in that answer. So he keeps on talking up Espada, but he's also saying we're not going to let Espada interview with other teams, and he doesn't have the power to stop Espada from interviewing with other teams. Dana! You don't have to talk. Talky, talky, talky. No more talky. Put a muzzle on it. Think about what you say. This has been an all-year thing, and we'll play some of the highlights in a moment. But either he is one of these two things, and spend it for however you want. Either he's a mastermind of misleading people or just has zero poker face and no filter. And here's the latest tidbit. From this same press conference from Dana Brown. Chandler Rome's got two headlines out of this. He doesn't know his spot is not under contract. Also, when asked about financial flexibility to make big moves, I don't think we have a ton, but I think the deal is this. I think Jim will do whatever it takes to win. And if it means that we have to spend a little more, he will do it. I think he's definitely shown faith in me to drive this thing. So if I go to him and say, hey, we have this potential scenario on the table. You can probably get this done. I need you to get this approved. I think we'll be able to do that. So we might be able to do things, but I don't think we have any money. That's not going to exactly help out your negotiating position with anybody that you're potentially trying to sign. Any agent worth their salt is going to look at that quote and say like, oh, well, what's the point of even having a conversation with this team if they're not going to offer us what we're looking for? Let's go look at some of the other teams that actually might be willing to spend. I don't know, the Rangers or other teams like that. And I actually think Dana Brown is probably wrong about Jim Crane. I think Crane's going to be a little bit more open to going over the uh, competitive balance tax. But I just wish Dana would stop talking. I'm not saying to shut up and run the Excel spreadsheet, shut up and watch the all 22 baseball edition of a batter at the plate. Shut up and negotiate. <laughs> yeah, Sean, that's it. Shut up and negotiate, Dana, because every single time he opens his mouth, he finds another foot to put in it like he's Rex Ryan or whoever else likes feet. I don't understand the feet thing, by the way. Just a side tangent. I, I don't. I don't get... I don't get that. They're gross. They got fungus on them. Ugh. How many people even wash their feet in the shower? People don't think about that enough. So, uh, damn, for some people, the sneakier, the better. <laughs> that, that is probably true, Sean, unfortunately. <laughs> Hopefully, you're not speaking from experience. but uh, I'm not. You're not? Okay. No. Good, good to know. We're, we're learning new things about each other every single day. Here's the last funny quote from Dana Brown. Again, there's just so many. When he was asked about just the process of interviewing managers. I'm leading the charge on the interview, but of course, I want Jim Crane's blessing on it. But I'm leading the charge. I'll ask Bagwell some questions, and I'll ask also ask some of our front office people some questions, like my AGMs. Quite frankly, I'll ask friends in the game questions, people I know well, some ex-players, some ex-coaches, if I want to talk about some of the candidates. So he's going to ask everybody. I'll ask you, Chandler Rome. <laughs> I'll ask you about it. I'll ask you, Sean Mapes. I'll ask you, Paul Gallant. And we're going to ask Brian McTaggart. And we're going to ask Allison Footer. And we're going to ask Adam Spillane. And we're going to ask... Who else covers the Astros? Jason Bristol. And we're going to ask Jeremy Booth. Ah! I'm just 
listing random reporters in, in Houston. And then we're going to ask Randy McAvoy. And then we're going to ask Will, the guy at Fox. And then we're going to ask. Ah! He is Howard Dean. He is such a politician. He can't help himself. And he just puts his foot in his mouth. And it's funny to watch. But it does make you a little bit uninspired about him as the general manager of the team. No. Again, he might get the manager higher right. Or Jim Crane will get the manager higher right. And honestly, the more he talks, the more I'm like, you know what, Jim Crane? Maybe maybe you take a little more power back. Maybe just a little more power back. I'm also thinking to myself, um, remember James Click? He wasn't that bad. I actually liked hearing less from James Click. And I know a lot of people in media are like, we want these guys to talk. Do you? <laughs> Some thoughts on Dana Brown, who believes he has the power to stop Joe Espada from interviewing from for other manager positions even though he's not under contract and on top of that is saying yeah I don't think we have that much financial flexibility publicly some responses to that on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5 JG ball in five says he doesn't know how long Dana Brown is going to last in Houston and went further saying Jim needs to have Dana Brown neutered until they get a manager. Well, that seems extreme to neuter anybody in 2023, but I do think at the very least they need to give him some press coaching. Isn't that basically what this managerial search is, though? It's like, yeah, Dana, you're leading the search, but run everything by me and Jeff Bagwell and then cool. everybody you know yes and then some friends <laughs> neighbors <laughs> I don't know about the neighbors oh I don't know <laughs> I don't even know about the friends I mean I, I feel like it's only industry professionals assistant GMs generally the all more, nine of them the more people you ask the the more trouble you're gonna give yourself don't ask that many people you have to have some conviction here. You also should know whether or not your guy's under contract. Just a thought. Well, I mean, Jim Crane's going to be the one that actually has to make the decision. That's true, Sean. But <laughs> Dana Brown just gets to pretend like he's making the decision. But it would be nice if he... He's been already been neutered. Of, he's, professionally, he's been neutered. But pretending that Joe Espada can't negotiate or do interviews with other team is just wrong. You can't pretend things when they're factually inaccurate and everybody knows about it. Uh, more comments. Hugh Dab, twitch.tv slash ESPN 97.5 says, Long live Dana Brown. Brown is at the very least better than Holgerson. Not, not, not a great year for Dana's in the city of Houston. That is for sure. Uh, Waka Flocka Buck says, We effed up last offseason with no GM until February. No, it was January. And now we won't have a coach until December. I don't think it's a big deal who they hire as manager still. I really don't. I, I just think that Dana Brown needs to stop talking. This isn't even a criticism of Dana Brown's actual job that he's done. He hasn't really done anything of note to criticize other than he brought Justin Verlander back and some people weren't big fans of that. But I actually thought it made sense given the issues with their pitching, but it's more just stop talking, dude. Just stop talking. That's I'm giving you advice here. Advice that you could have come to me and ask for after you ask Jim Crane and Jeff Bagwell about what you're allowed to do. And random people at HEV. Yeah. And parking attendants. <laughs> well, uh, first, before, before that, how about he asks the parking attendants where we're at with the Astros paying for my deductible for the car that was assaulted in my parking lot because their parking lot attendant let too many people in. Hmm. You'll be going to arbitration, I feel like. I definitely am going to be going to arbitration. But there actually has been some progress. I I, my, I have some hope. Some hope. Uh, from the 281, let us spot an interview. He hasn't gotten a job in the previous seven shots. That's also a great point. It's more just saying that you're going to prevent him from interviewing with other teams when you can't. Also, when he's interviewed like every offseason for the last like, 10 offseasons. Not yeah, actually, ten. Off but you don't, you don't do that now. Dana Brown. I'm, I'm not saying he's in, incapable of going up to the microphone and saying, "Well, I mean, all those other interviews have gone so well, huh?" Like, I'm not saying he would say that. He wouldn't. But I'm saying that, hey, you shouldn't say that we wouldn't let him interview with other teams before you even start the process of narrowing down who you want to hire as the next manager of the team, because that would piss me off. That pisses any human being off. We're not going to let him interview. Why? Why? It's kind of messed up to not let him interview with other teams. I know. That is one of the... 
It, it's one of the crazier rules in sports because it's not like I get if you can't let him interview for a equal position. So if he wants to be the bench coach somewhere else, I get why you'd be like, no, he, he has a contract to be the our bench coach. But if he's going to interview for a promotion, I feel like you should just let him interview. I don't know. I do, too. But I also feel like you shouldn't say that we have him under control when he's not under contract. That's really it's it's ultimately it's it's as simple as that for me, Sean. It's, oh yeah, I was talking about like the actual actions. Saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like hey. The action, the business practices of MLB. Well, if you're gonna let him interview with other teams, then clearly you don't care that much. Yeah, he's interviewed again for seven different teams. Want to go back through some through some of the Dana Brown classics? Remember at the trade deadline when he talked about Jose Altuve and Jordan Alvarez returning, being like a trade. That was fun. It feels like a part of a trade because these guys have been out for so much of the season that it, feel like, it feels like we're acquiring two new players. So, uh, and that's, a, that's an impactful thing to this club and what they mean to this club. I got to say, as far as politicians go, that is a great spin zone. If he could do more spin zone instead of just being wrong, that would be great. We're saying that he has to run all decisions he makes by everybody else. Here he was at his introductory press conference saying, yeah, Altuve, Bregman, we want them to retire here. That, hey, you know what? These guys should retire here. You know, they should be Houston's for life, man, because we think they value their their abilities. We think Altuve has still got some uh, gas in the tank, you know, and, and of course, you know, Bregman, he's still pretty good, so... Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to sustain the winning and it's going to, it's going to some guys we're going to get done sooner and then some guys we're going to have to wait, but we are constantly in communication to try to make sure that we get these players secured. Hmm. And then we also had this from Dana Brown, August 9th, when asked about Kyle Tucker's future on the Astros flagship. Let me put it to you this way. Kyle Tucker will be a Houston Astro. We feel strongly about getting it done, and I feel he will be an Astro for the rest of his career. We'll get it done. Okay. A lot of promises. Not a great poker face. All the makings of a politician. What happened to this organization, man? I'm not what, there. What happened? I'm not there. This guy's the general manager. You had Jeff Luno before. Jeff Luno is one of the greatest... Sports executives, yes, exactly. that we've ever seen, yes, exactly. Well, you're not going to be able to replace him with that. Like that's a <laughs> that's a unicorn. That's a once in a lifetime guy. If Dana Brown didn't talk, by the way, none of us would have any questions about Dana Brown because we wouldn't know what he does. Yeah, because he hasn't. I like you said. All, all by virtue of when he was hired, all he had to do was the trade deadline, and it was bring bring back Justin Verlander, which was good because he was basically the only good pitcher that they had the last month of the season. I hope there's no more scandals in the Astros organization because Dana Brown might just accidentally talk about it. Yes, he 100% would. He would, he would 100% be like, well, that reminds so we got me this of new our new system. <laughs> we got this new sign stealing system and you know, I, I think it's really helping out our batters. Yeah, you know, this guy named Connor Stallions dropped off a manila envelope <laughs> on my desk. Oh man, uh, if it's from Stallions, that's that's coming in boxes. 